If you're working inside of Airtable and you need to create records in multiple places at once, you're gonna love this video. I'm gonna be going through an example that we see time and time again where we need to create a new contact and simultaneously create a new company that that contact is related to. But not in all cases, sometimes the company might already exist in our database. And how to solve this problem is a question that we get asked a lot here. So if learning more about how to do this with one super form to rule them all is of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth and this is Gap Consulting. It's my mission here to help you unlock the full potential of no code tools and Airtable and Fillout. These are two of my favorite tools at present in the no code space. Now, before we get into the video, I first want to invite you to join me for some free training. This is going to teach you all those key features of Airtable. It's called my Airtable Crash Course totally free for you to sign up and you can grab it at gapconsulting.io slash Airtable dash crash dash course. And over about a week, we are going to deliver to your inbox free training to teach you all the key features of Airtable. But without further ado, let's hop on into my screen and I'm going to paint the example for us. And then I'm going to show you where the problem lies and how to solve that problem. Now, here we are inside of a brand new interface. I built this with Airtable's AI generator. I simply told it, look, I want to build a contact management system that has contacts and companies. And so, of course, what does Airtable do? As you would expect, builds two different tables. We've got on the back end here, companies, where we're tracking stuff like the website, the address, uh, the industry, number of employees. And also, I want to point out that there's a linked relationship to contacts. Now, this is a separate table. Contacts, of course, are the people that work at those organizations. So what are their emails? What are their phone numbers, et cetera? Now, I do want to point out, sometimes Airtable AI gets this wrong. It doesn't put the right field type here. So it has just a text field for email, a text field for phone number. Over here, back in the companies, you'll see a text field for website. There are better options, in my opinion, to use here if you're actually building an Airtable. You've got URLs, you have phone number field types. Use those. But for the AI, you know, this is pretty quick, right? It came together quickly. It's pretty darn accurate. So I'm happy with the output. And perhaps most importantly, it built me that front end interface, which is this page that I'm accessing here. I can flip between my companies. I get a view of those. I can click on a button to add a company. It automatically built me the form. Similarly, I can cycle over to contacts and I can add a contact. But here, my friends, is where the problem lies. When I'm adding a contact to my database, I can come down, put in their phone number, their email, etc. What happens when I get to company? Well, I can search and this is a link to my existing companies. But what if the company isn't already in my database? How do I solve it? This is only showing me companies that already exist in my database. So I cannot create a new contact and have them linked to that company in one fell swoop if the company doesn't already exist. Instead, I have to close out the form. I have to go over to companies. I have to add the company first, fill out all the information about the company, then when this is done, I can go back into contacts, I can add the contact and the new company will show up in the drop down list. This is where you lose people, folks. This is where from a UX perspective, if it's not simple for your team to use, they're not going to use it or they're going to use it improperly. And that's going to mean automations break, workflows don't go as planned. All kinds of problems lie here if you don't get the functionality that you expect out of your interface. So how can we solve this problem? How can we make it easier for our end user to have one button that they push where they can find the company from a drop down? If it exists, if it doesn't, they can add a new company and then continue to fill out information about the contact. That's what we need to do. And this means that we're creating multiple records in two different tables, right? We're creating a record in the company and a record in the contacts, but not every time. Sometimes there is no new company, but we still need to create the contact and fill out is the amazing form software that's going to solve this problem for us. So let's dive in. 
Here we are inside of Fillout and I have an example folder that I'm working from or as they call them workspaces and I am going to swing on over and make a fillout. I'm going to do this from scratch, watch me step by step and feel free to follow along with me. If you're not already a fillout user, sign up using our affiliate link, please. It's a great way for you to show some love back to the channel and I will share that wherever you found this video. So here I am, I'm creating a new fill out form from scratch. I choose my theme. You can always come back and change this later, but let's say I'm going with uh, simple purple. We'll keep it simple, we'll keep it purple. We'll create a form. And here it's going to ask us to name the form and I will call this a uh, contact company creation. And I will continue. Now, I am, am going to start building this form, but to make things simpler, I'm going to start with the integration to Airtable. So I'm gonna flip into integrate here. And I'm going to select Airtable. And I have a demo account already set up here. I will say next. And this is the database. Now, if you haven't already built your integration, you just follow the on-screen instructions to integrate, fill out, and get it talking to your Airtable backend. But here I am, this is my database. And this is important. We are creating the contact every time. The company is optional. The company might already exist or we might need to create it. So I must select the lowest common denominator. In this case, the contacts. So let's pull that in and we can just finish the setup right from there. We don't have to go into any of the mapping yet. This is all we need. Let's flip back now to our edit mode. And what I'm going to look for, you'll see here I'm now finding my Airtable fields. These are the fields that fill out knows exist in my Airtable account and I want to bring in company. So just like that, I've added company and if I hit that plus button, I'm going to see a list of the companies that exist in my database. And that is very helpful. Just with a few clicks right off the bat, we've already got that integration working. But what about adding an option for a new company? That is where we're gonna come in on the right-hand panel. We're going to go into create records and allow users to create new records. Now this is going to now open for us an option, which is a sub form. This is a new form inside of our primary form and we can open this up in a new page. So let's open it up. This is looking exactly like our current form, right? Because it's again, just a sub form. It has the same theme and all of that. And you can see that it already knows everything about the companies. So it looked up and it associated all of the fields in companies. And we can choose if we wanna keep all of these fields when we require a new company be added or if we wanna remove them. Maybe I don't care so much about the number of employees on a new company when we're adding it to our CRM. So I can just trash that field. It hasn't deleted the field in Airtable. All it's done is removed that field from our form. Similarly, I can do that with annual revenue, right? So maybe all I care about is the company name, the website. Uh, maybe I don't even care about the address and I care about the industry and I'll let them optionally upload the logo. Everything here is fully customizable. I can make these fields required on the right-hand panel. I can say, you must tell me the industry, you must tell me the website and you must tell me the company name for example. Now remember, this is just a sub form. This is a form within a form. So in a different panel or a different page entirely, I can flip back in and look at my primary form. I'm asking them to create a new contact, remember. And here is my company. And when I click on that plus now for add, you see that I can create a new company or I can select from the pre-existing list. This I love but we haven't finished. We have more questions for creating the contact. So let's ask them. So we go back over here to Airtable fields and these are the different fields that exist in our contact table. So I've got a full name field. I wanna bring it in. I wanna bring in my email and I wanna bring in my phone number. Similarly as to before, I can make these fields required if I want to. Uh, I don't have to, but I have the full control over all of this. Now let's flip back into our integration really quickly. And we're gonna go back to our connection with Airtable. And you can see here that this form, this is the primary form, right? The contacts form, it's already mapped because I integrated it with Airtable first. And then I brought those fields into my fill out form. Well, then fill out already knew that I should be mapping the information that I receive here directly to this Airtable field. So this field in, in Airtable is mapped to this field in fill out. And that is exactly what we want. If you don't see this, 
when you look at your integrations page, it means that you have not properly got your fields connected. So when you receive a fill out submission in your form, it's not going to automatically populate in Airtable. Now, remember, we've got a form within a form. So we kind of have two forms here. If I go into my other one, this is my company form, the sub form, and I look at my integration, it's going to look at the company side of things. And all of this was done automatically. That's how smart fill out is. The integration they've built with Airtable is just exceptional. So it already maps to all of those fields and we're good to go. All I need to do now is go back to my form and publish it. So here I am back in my main form. I can publish. I don't need to do this in the sub form. The publish at the high level is just fine. But if I want to, I can go ahead and publish here as well. So I've got both forms published just, just to be extra safe. And what we can do now is go over to sharing. This is the form link that was automatically generated for us. Depending on your fill out plan, you might be able to customize this link, but I want to copy this link and I'm going to bring it back now into our Airtable interface. And I'm going to go in to edit my interface pages. And rather than having this button that opens up a modal that allows me to create a contact and only a contact, I'm going to add a better button. I want to open up this new web page, the form to fill out. I'm going to open it in a new tab and I'm going to say add contact and I've capitalized contact here. Note that this button is white and the original button that just opens up the Airtable form is black. And so we're going to be able to contrast these two different types of buttons as they are implementing in our solution. So let's go ahead and publish these changes and take this out for a spin. Now this is an active interface. So this is option one. Let's say I want to add myself to the database. Note that Gap Consulting, the company I work for, is not in the database. So I would need to manually add a company here by opening up the company form. And then I would need to go over to contacts and add a new contact. And then I would be able to link to the company. That's a lot of steps. We're going to lose people in that process. So instead, we have this one button, add a contact. It opens up the form on the side. Here's the company. I search for Gap Consulting. Nothing comes back. Add new or create new. It's going to open up the sub form and I say Gap Consulting. Here's the website. What's the industry? Let's see. What do we have? I guess we'll go with tech. We could add a logo if we wanted. We can submit. As soon as I do this, I'm going to be redirected to the primary form, but I've also already created on the back end, already created that new company, only with the information that we required on the form, of course, and we do not yet have a contact person linked to the company. But imagine I'm the person accessing the form. I'm not going flipping back and forth. I'm not checking that. I'm only showing you that so that you see that it's working in real time. This person just created the company, didn't even realize they did it maybe, and they just continue with the form. There they go. They put in all their information, they submit, when they close this window out, boom, they go back into the Airtable interface and the new company is created. The new contact is linked to it. We can go into the contacts table. The contact is created with the phone number, with the email linked to the company. Everything happened in one fell swoop without having to go through multiple different stages. I mean, those stages still happened, but they happened in one place very logical workflow and people didn't get lost along the way. I hope you got a ton of value from this video, but if you need help setting this up or have any additional questions, swing by our website. We have tons of options available for you. Of course, if you did get value, I'd love it if you could give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, but most importantly, keep on building.